Ich bin die Pochwalone Jesus Christus, my dear brothers and sisters, Polish Catholics, I would like to greet you and to speak to you some words of encouragement so that you will remain always faithful to the Holy Catholic faith. It is, of course, evident that we are living in very confusing times. Unfortunately, even within the life of the Church, especially uh, the last events which are known to all people, even to non-Catholics, the entire world, because of this um, unfortunate uh, document of the Vatican, which the title Fiducia Supplicans, by which um, the Holy See and ultimately the Pope are allowing to Catholic priests to impart uh, a kind of blessings to same-sex couples. This is, of course, very, a very serious problem, very tragic, and it is uh, for all people who are simply observing these uh, facts very troubling, a very scandalizing moment, even though the document is saying that the doctrine of the Church has not changed and the doctrine regarding marriage, family and sexuality has not changed. In spite of this, the same document is undermining this same doctrine and even in practice denying it by the very fact of allowing Catholic priests to give a blessing to homosexual, not to homosexual people, but to homosexual couple. So this is the very problem, because the name and the significance and the gesture of blessing to every person who is still using his reason and his logic means a kind of approval when not in theory but in practice because the word blessing means uh, speak good of this reality of course some the document and then some clergy and bishops they try to justify this gestures by saying we are not blessing um, a union but a couple but this is simply a play of words and can not convince no one such exp such explications are simply against fundamental logics and we cannot, we cannot be uh, simply foolish, evidently, by such words, such jokes and plays of words. This is unworthy of a church document, this is unworthy of bishops and cardinals to foolish the people, to foolish the entire world by saying the church has not changed its doctrine, but you can, priests can give a kind of blessing. Even the other trickery and lie and deception is that they say it is not a liturgical blessing but a non-liturgical blessing, a spontaneous blessing. You can call this what you want, that it is a blessing. And so we should firmly say we will never accept such trickery, such lies, such undermining of the divine revelation of the truth of our Catholic faith, which says that homosexual acts are intrinsically evil in every circumstances, and homosexual couples or union is in itself a grievous scandal, and it represents a message Simply to be a couple, homosexual couple, is against 
the divine order of creation and therefore is grievously evil. Even if they pretend, these homosexual couples, that we are not doing homosexual acts, but this is a foolishing of all people. No one will, will believe this. And uh, further, it is a public scandal. It is a public message contrary to God's truth and order of creation. It is these two people are putting themselves in an immediate and constant uh, occasion of grave sin. And this very fact is already a sin and can in no way, even in not in, uh, in, in no way, even in not an ambiguous or implicit way, to be encouraged or to be in some way blessed. This, this gives a message that the Catholic Church in some way by practice, when not by theory, but by practice, gives the message to the entire world that we are accepting the fact of homosexual couples. And by this document, and by this practice, which now starts in several places of so-called spontaneous or pastoral blessings, the Catholic Church is um, de facto becoming a kind of propagandist of the world global gender ideology, which is anti-Christian, the gender ideology, which is against human dignity. And therefore we must say to our priests and bishops that we cannot accept this document. We must remain faithful to our Catholic faith and pray for the Pope, of course, that God will illuminate him, that he will reject and annulate this document as soon as possible. This is our duty as good Catholics. And this will be our sign of love for the Pope, a true love for the Pope and for the Holy See. So in this context, my dear brothers and sisters, let you, know, let you not allow you to be confused by no one. St. Paul says in the letter to the Galatians, even if an angel of heaven will come and proclaim you another gospel, do not believe. And the same when from Rome is coming documents which are evidently undermining, at least undermining, the gospel. We will not accept this, as St. Paul said. But nevertheless, the church is indestructible. The church cannot be overcome by the enemies because the church is divine. The Holy See, the Peter's office of the Pope, is founded by Christ and cannot be uh, overcome by the enemies. Unfortunately, the enemies in our days penetrated very much in the offices and the high positions in the Holy See. But they will not manage to overcome uh, the Holy See because it is founded uh, by God. God permits a temporal obfuscation and confusion even in the Holy See. It was in the history of the Church sometimes also. Not so much, but it was. And then again God intervened and gave again very strong, good, holy popes. And this will come surely again. So therefore, don't lose courage. And don't seek um, your own ways or don't try to establish your own church or a kind of sect. Don't go and choose your own priest who is completely independent. This cannot be a Catholic priest, cannot be autonomous and independent. This is not Catholic. A Catholic priest cannot be a guru and a leader of a sect, even with the traditional faith, traditional mass and so on. This is against the nature of Catholic church and faith. 
even when you are persecuted, when you are denied, for example, the traditional Latin Mass, the true Catholic faith, then seek good bishops who will approve you. Seek even, this could be, emeritus bishops, but it must be bishops in good stand who will give this priest his blessing. And these priests and in extraordinary situations and faithful, they must give account to a bishop who is in good stand in the Catholic Church and they cannot be completely independent for themselves. So I would encourage you, offer this suffering, this is a suffering to live in such a confused times, but God had placed you in his wisdom in this time so that you can gain many merits for the eternal life and that your faith will be purified like gold. And then continue to love the church always. Continue to pray for Pope, especially for Pope Francis, every day. Offer sacrifices for his, for his conversion, that God may illuminate Pope Francis, give him the light that he again will return to his proper task which Christ gave him, that is to say, to strengthen with all clarity all faithful and bishops in the holy Catholic faith. And when we together, all the Catholics in the world, will together storm heaven, implore God that he will convert Pope Francis, that he will give him the divine light, that he may repent of all what he confused in the church until now, then this will be a miracle and we will be all grateful to God. Offer your prayers, do acts of repentance, do acts of reparation for all the sins in the church against the Catholic faith, which are committing cardinals, bishops, priests, and even the Holy See in this time. And so this is the, the true Catholic behavior. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us do a great chain of prayers, of crusade, holy crusade, to implore that God will illuminate Pope Francis, that he may recognize his task, and that he may again strengthen with all clarity the Catholic faith, and then also, please, let us already now start daily to implore with humility and trust that God may grant us an era, a time of many holy popes. And repeat every day, I believe firmly in the one Catholic apostolic faith. And for this, I give you the blessing. Et benedictio de omnipotentis patris, et fili, et spiritus sancti, descendat super vos, et maniat semper. Amen. Nech bendi pochvalon Jesus Christus.